guess the development might have on the uh, on the safety of Flora Bank. And that's where I'm going to lead to, but I need to set you up a little bit with the past history, which I'll go through quickly. Um, but just uh, uh, to give you uh, a snapshot of how, of how this has worked in the past, uh, a sediment trend analysis is attempting to show how the sediments are working in the environment, where they've come from, what their patterns of transport are, and, and their dynamic behavior. Are they eroding or accreting? And to do it, uh, we need a boat, and we need a, a sediment sample, which can be taken with a little grab sample, and that, uh, that sample represents about the top 20 centimeters or so of, of sediment, and we take an integrated uh, sample from that, uh, 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 that, that when I take the grain, we also need a, uh, a grain size distribution. And, uh, and when I take the sample from the grab, I'm making the assumption that that grain size distribution has integrated all the processes that are responsible for putting the sediment there in the first place. So in some respects, I'm using, I'm using data, the only data, that have integrated all the processes responsible for its movement, transport, and, uh, and, um, and deposition. And the, I, I like to uh, uh, think of sediment trend analysis as a bit like a, a Sudoku puzzle. And uh, when you, uh, if any, any of you have worked on this, it's a, uh, uh, you need to fill in the numbers one to nine in all the uh, rows and columns as well as in each of the sub boxes. And you need to, uh, to do that, you're given some clues, and those are the numbers that you have in order to try and work out the rest of the number sequences. And those clues, if you like, are the observations. They're like my grain size distributions when I go and collect samples in the environment. And when you uh, <coughs> work it out, you, if you've ever tried it, you're, you'll probably have an eraser and you'll try out numbers and, 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 and rub it out until you get the right solution. But when you do get the solution, there's a couple of things about that solution, and one is that there's only one solution possible, and it must be correct. You can't have another, another answer. So I, I'm pointing this out because when I do a sediment trend analysis, I don't know what kind of result I'm going to get. I have no preconceived <laughs> idea of what, of, of what the findings will be. And, uh, and that is actually quite the opposite of, of, of the numerical model that's been generated by Petronas, where they actually know the results that they want. And, and that, that is quite a, quite a different uh, 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 philosophy in, in, the, in the two approaches. Um, Here's an example. Uh, these are samples that were collected at the mouth of Littleton Harbour, Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, and I just, to, to, I'm, I'm putting this up for a reason, that those ha have become my observations. Each one of those dots is a sample, and the Pacific Ocean is out on the right, and, and uh, the harbour of Christchurch is, is to the left. And they wanted to, uh, <coughs> well, no, just before, uh, the contract was let to me. The port phoned me up and said, look, uh, Patrick, um, if you show that our dredged material disposal program is actually going to affect Maori mussel beds, we'd rather not know. And, and, and that, that floored me. They were going to cancel because they, they didn't actually want to know if they were going to have a problem. And that has been a source of a lot of my career where, in fact, I've dealt with the clients that don't really want to know. And that, uh, and that happens in lawsuits. It, it, it certainly happens in all sort of big business, commercial, environmental uh, work. And, and so now I'm telling uh, any possible
possible or a future client. If you don't really want to know, then don't use sediment trend analysis. In this case, uh, the patterns of my transport, uh, they provide the explanation for the observations. I could lecture a great deal about the, the, uh, about the, the, the results, but from that one diagram of how the sediments are working, I know the sources, I know the behavior, I know exactly how the past history of their dredging and, and the dredge disposal programs are happening. I know where to recommend further places to put uh, dredge soil and so on and so on. So, so what we're getting is an understanding of how the <coughs> environment is working. And it's that understanding that we can use to make management uh, decisions. So in the case of Flora Bank, which you are all familiar with, we have a, a, a feature that is quite amazingly wonderful, in my opinion. And we all know that it's got an eelgrass uh, substrate of population. And we know that it is a, a very significant habitat for the, for the, North, uh, for the Northwest Pacific. Um, and so I won't follow what Kyle has told us. Uh, uh, about the importance of Flora Bank as a, as a fish habitat. We have the, again, what you're familiar with, the proposed uh, LNG terminal with the idea of a, a, a suspension bridge crossing Flora Bank, and that way the argument is that they can't affect the processes on Flora Bank, and then they'll drop down to a trestle structure and a T-junction where the ships will, uh, will berth. Now I had this amazing op opportunity to do the largest sediment trend analysis in my life, and it was 2,500 samples. Each one of those dots is a sample. When I did the, 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 the analysis, the sediment trend analysis itself, I, did, I, I wasn't particularly concentrating on Flora Bank. It wasn't, it wasn't really in focus. I was trying to get an overall understanding of the, of the whole area. And so those are the observations again, and from it I get uh, the explanation when I get all the pathways. You won't understand this map, I can't see it very well myself, but uh, there are pathways of arrow movements uh, uh, and with sources, sources of sediment coming from very often the narrows where glacial deposits are, are, are being the source for the, for the sediments. But what came out of the study was Flora Bank itself. And you'll see no trends on Flora Bank. And, and Flora Bank just about drove me crazy when I was trying to do the interpretation. And, I, I, and, and the, the, the things I began to realize and understand about Flora Bank was that the only way you could explain the sediments on top of Flora Bank is to be a lag deposit. It, it, it hadn't it hadn't been transported, it wasn't sediment transported from the Inverness Passage and the Skeena River. It wasn't sediment coming in across Agnew Bank or Horsey Bank. It had no source. And not only that, the sediment was unique. It was the coarsest sediment, which is actually medium sand. And it was the most well-sorted sediment in the whole area. And there's no sediment like it in the whole of the Prince Rupert area. I could, uh, I could go into the explanation as to how Flora Bank is formed, uh, uh, but, uh, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll move on uh, and we'll just go to the principal findings of the sediment trend analysis. And that is that Flora Bank is truly unique. And in fact, it shouldn't be there at all. It's a, it's a medium sand we have seven meter tides going up and down over it. We've got the Skeena River flow on one side, we've got the tidal dynamics on the Porpoise Harbor side, uh, and we've got sea and swell waves in Chatham Sound. All these processes are certainly adequate to move the sediment on Flora Bank. And, and since there's no sediment like it, why, why is the sediment staying there? It's, it's, it's inconceivable. I personally have flown the whole coast of, uh, of British Columbia when I was mapping the coastline, uh, when I was with the, uh, 
uh, Geological Survey of Canada back in the 80s, I can tell you that there is not another spot on the BC coast that resembles Flora Bank. It, 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 it is a unique feature. It, it's, the sand is ancient. It, it's, it was formed as sea level came down after glaciation, acted on glacial deposits, and left on the bank this very, very coarse sand. And that there's no other sand anywhere like it in the, in the area. It's, it's unique sand. So if the sand were lost, the fish habitat would also be lost. So if that sand goes into danger, we're going to lose the habitat. And neither could come back again. There's no other sand to, to replace it. There's no, there are no transport pathways of sand coming onto the bank or off the bank. It's contained on, on Flora Bank itself. So that would mean no more fish. And, and that, uh, and, and that uh, is the, uh, the uh, base on the concept that the sediment trend analysis allowed us to, uh, to, to understand how the bank must be working. So what we have then, if that sand is ancient and it's staying on top of Flora Bank, it means that we have a sort of a barrier, if you like, that's holding the sand on the bank. And I've called it metaphorically a wall of energy. And that wall of energy is holding the sand on Flora Bank, and that, that wall is the integration of all the processes acting on the bank. The currents, the, the Skeena River currents, the tidal currents, and the waves. They're all working together to keep the sand from escaping off the bank. But if we have a wall of energy on that side, we have to have a wall of energy on this side. And further, otherwise we'd lose the sand. And those two walls have to be equal. If, they, if, if the net sum of all the processes operating on either side of the bank were different, the sand would escape. So in the design, there's going to be 488 pilings uh, from the suspension bridge out to the uh, margin of Agnew Bank, and then two ships, I think they're about the size of football fields. And it's interesting that they, the ships themselves are not allowed to leave the dock in winds over 25 uh, kilometers an hour. So it means that if, if, if there is a storm and their ships happen to be there, uh, the, the, their, their effectiveness as a wave block will be uh, very, very considerable. And I'm going to be showing you shortly that the waves are very, very important. I believe, from the understanding I have of Flora Bank, that the trestles uh, on both sides, and when ships are at dock, will reduce the processes that are able to act on the margin of Flora Bank. They'll reduce the tidal currents and they will reduce the waves. And that will break 